So today we're going to take a look back at uh, things that I've used throughout the years that I've previewed on my channel and uh, you find people have watched videos on. Uh, normally my, my thing is I buy a tool, I kind of give my first impressions of it and after I get a few miles on it, I come back to you guys and I, and I let you know what I think about it because anybody can take a tool, look at it and say, yeah, this is good. It's another thing to use it. That's that's kind of how I go about things around here. Um, this isn't usually an end of the year thing, but the YouTube algorithm likes it and I have a few things that I put a bunch of miles on so yeah so let's uh get into it i guess so let's start off with brunt work boots um this company i never i didn't actually do a long format video on these i kind of did a short uh what what brunt likes to do is they just kind of blanket the market as far as social media goes with their product and then people like me try them on and give them free advertisement basically is what the story is there and uh they, they reached out to me said hey you want to try a pair of our boots i said sure why not uh my company pays for boots but um so i'm getting them free anyway so if that tells you anything but uh yeah i was kind of curious because like i said yeah i see them everywhere if if they're actually any good and um i figured i'd give them a try a couple people have asked me what i thought about them or if i had an opinion on them so kind of leads me to that as well but uh as far as uh before we take a look down on them so i can kind of show you wear and tear items and a couple of things i've, I've had with them um i could say they're they're a nice lightweight boot uh it's a composite toe which is nice winter time and summer time your your toes don't get extremely hot or extremely cold and um yeah pretty much out of the box comfortable me personally um i'm usually between an 11 and a 12 that's north american size shoes um these size 12 they were fine i have a wider foot i should say um not necessarily a wide foot as far as buying a shoe but wider than a normal foot and uh, yeah these these fit me just 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 fine in that that aspect uh, a little bit of extra room inside of them for um if you want to wear insulated socks and uh yeah, so let's take a take a look down on them, and I'll show you the wear and tear and all the other good stuff. So starting off with the, uh, I guess that would be the left boot there. Uh, you can see, traction-wise, we're doing pretty good. I usually wear boots out on the heel here. Uh, we're starting to get get a little deep on the wear there. Um, on the toe, we're doing all right. Um, speaking of toes. Literally the week, uh, the first week I put these on, if you can see right here on the uh, toe guard for the boot, um, there's a little bit of a rip there. And what I did was I was backing up a pallet jack in a, in a small, in a tight area, I guess probably a better description. And um, what happened was it was an electric pallet jack, so it's self-propelled. I got a little too close to my toe and caught the edge of the pallet jack here and it rolled up over my toe and took the protective cap and smashed it into the top of my toes and I tell you the pain <laughs> was so bad I was afraid to look at it but fortunately sort of a bruise going across the top of my toes I really didn't have too much damage going on but yeah I kind of let it sit there for a little bit and uh, took my boot off and looked for moisture because I wasn't sure what was going on in there but um yeah I mean these are definitely worn I could say that much um stitching on them is pretty much holding together surprising for as much welding as i did this year i didn't destroy these laces but i guess i got lucky with that and um yeah not too bad nothing's pulling apart i mean aside from here uh, another thing too uh, there's this stuff called shoe goo uh, i always keep it around i actually used it with the uh the hobby like the fpv hobby i used to do uh more often but um yeah shoe goo have you ever rip some rubber off of a boot that stuff is great for putting uh, putting it back together now coming over here to the right boot um, again tread still holding up pretty good we're getting a little a little deep in the wear on that one you can start seeing the black coming through in the back heels in pretty good shape starting to peel up there not too bad again I've been wearing these for six months um, laces are still in good shape there nothing seems to be pulling apart as far as that goes uh, a little bit of a scratch there i forget how i did that but that was me um 
hitting something with it. Um, this is my my go button foot, so this part of the boot gets a lot of wear rubbing on the side of the uh, the old inside of the truck there when when I'm hitting the gas pedal. But um, yeah, I mean can't have any I don't have any complaints with it um one thing I forget which boot was it, it was it was this boot um over here where you got the the ties for the laces when you when you're stitch when you're stitching them up there um this one right here uh was digging into my ankle bone and I actually had to go in with the um the little die grind the um, angle grinder my Milwaukee angle grinder and knock it down because you can see the other one right here um is kind of sitting proud they're all they're all kind of sitting proud like that a little little oversight on the old fit and finish there uh this particular problem i have on a lot of work boots um i have a calcium deposit on my ankle from when i was a skateboarder and knocking the skateboard off the side of my ankle a lot and uh yeah that's a common problem i have your mileage may differ but just something i feel that i should point out to you and um yeah the uh, as far as the exterior goes, the right one definitely had a little bit harder life than the left one. So um, yeah. Now getting into actual tools. Um, this particular one, I think it's been about a year since I've had this tool. It is a DCG 405 Dewalt five inch angle grinder. When I did the video on this, it was kind of a kind of a half of a video. I guess would probably be a better description as to what I did to it. Uh, this was with the um, one, one of the finger remover type things, the uh, uh, chainsaw cutting disc with this, and I kind of did a, that with this. And yeah, when I when I originally bought this, it was just going to be one of those tools I grab on occasion. Uh, what actually ended up happening was um, a week or two after I made that video, I was asked if I could um, change trucks because they needed a welder. I'm not a welder, but I could stick metal together. And um, there was a campaign out, and the campaign was for a forklift attachment. It's a, um, this particular one's a single double. It's just basically, you got two forks, and then they spread out, and then you can pick up two pallets or, or one pallet. And uh, with that single double, they had these here, these here brackets, and the um, it's just basically a bulkhead um, bracket. You got a bulkhead fitting sitting in here. Hoses come up here. Hoses come down here. And when they welded this bracket on at the factory, the guy kind of kicked the weld out about like that, and it was causing the hoses on the bottom to rub against the hook for the attachment that hooks onto the uh, carriage there. So. Um, I was asked if I could resolve this warranty campaign. Um, it was 65 trucks uh, or 65 attachments I had to to do for these. So, <laughs> yeah, I definitely definitely got a lot of miles on on this here guy. And basically, what what that that uh, campaign required me to do was to take this bracket, cut it off, and replace it. And Basically, what how how this thing was welded on? If you could see here, um, you got a weld down here, and then you have a, a weld right there in the front, and it basically sits kind of kind of like that. And what I had to do was I'll show you a good one um, weld or cut with the with the old grinder here, cut this weld off, and then cut this weld from the top straight through the plate because the um, I couldn't get to it from the other side. It's kind of hard to explain without actually showing. I'll drop a picture in if I have one of what, what the actual finished product was. Yes, I had to weld this or cut that weld, cut this weld, grind everything down and um, weld, weld the new bracket on. Um, yeah, and this guy, I, I used it. Uh, used the hell out of it more than I thought that I was going to use it when I when I first got it and this this thing's a champ it, it cuts through it uh with just a flappy disc but using using cutoff wheels with this thing and I'd probably burn up a a cutoff wheel per per bracket 
And I would say I got about one and a half of these cutting and grinding um, off before I had to replace the battery. I was using five amp hour and six amp hour batteries. So I think with a six amp hour battery, I think it would be safe to say I was getting 12 to 15 minutes of runtime out of this, which for battery operated, it's, it's kind of, it is what it is. There's, there's limitations as far as how much power you can get out of one of these things and, and wattage, I guess probably be a better, a better uh, description of it. But, um, yeah, it's, it did its thing. Like I said, aside from having to replace batteries every once in a while, it's, it's not that bad and it, it worked. I mean, I like it and, uh, probably not going to use it as much as I did the first six months I had it, but, um, yeah, she got a workout and I, yeah, I could definitely say that I recommend this. All right, getting into the next item on my list, which would be this here Milwaukee, um, right angle die grinder. Um, fuel I, I can't see their numbers so i'll have to drop it in but um yeah this kind of well one it kind of partners in with with this here bracket campaign as far as um doing a little prep work before i get the welding on the thing knocking off the off the uh scaling off of it so you get a nice clean weld and uh doing a little fine tuning when i'm getting in there to to clean the welds up so I could get a nice flat area to weld this thing on. Um, it, it did nice with that. I, a few people, when I, when I originally did this, they said this thing lacks power. Um, compared to what is, is what my, my question is. I mean, compared to a 5-inch, of course. Um, compared to a pneumatic, I, I really didn't notice that much of a difference, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I don't tend to beat on tools. If the tool that I got isn't working, I go pick up the one that will work. That's just kind of how I work. But yeah, I mean, as far as what I would expect this to do, it did it well. Uh, another another thing I have with um, that I would use one of these for before would be a pneumatic. And of course, now I got this battery one. Uh, I use a, have to knock out a lot of pins and reinstall said pin back in through the hole. And uh, yeah, uh, a lot of the problems I have with that is that once you're hammering out the pin, it gets a little bit mushroomed off, so you kind of got to get in there, knock that little mushroom end down so you can get the pin to go through without having to smash it through and give the next guy a headache. Uh, another thing, it's nice for this, little flappy sandy disc and inside the pinhole, you know what I mean, kind of get inside there and, and wallow this around. I just started doing some blue lights on um, these piece of crap little three-wheeler mechanic golf carts for a plant that I'm working at pedestrian blue lights kind of marks the floor so you can see them coming and uh yeah put a little deeper um attachment on the end of this thing and kind of wall around a hole and um yeah this thing's a champ I like it and um I could definitely recommend it and last but not least um kind of the surprise of the year something that I bought that um, I, I use a lot more than I thought I would. And that's this here little DeWalt gyroscopically controlled um, screwdriver thing. Um, this thing, like I said, it was just something kind of caught my eye and I figured, hey, let me, let me give it a shot. And uh, yeah, this thing, I use this more than I ever thought I would. It's, I, I keep it in the bottom of the bag and pretty much any type of screw that I need, I put a bit in the end of it and um, yeah, it just it just works. It works good. Um, there there is another one which has a handle that kind of actuates down to make it more of a pistol grip, and that one also has a clutch on the front of it. Um, that's neat, and I'm sure it's just as good as this one. For me though, I I, I just kind of like this form factor and the clutching action on it. You could get such good resolution with this as far as as far as when you're screwing screws in. I don't necessarily know if you need the clutching action if you're if you're actually paying attention when you're screwing it in. I've put in little teeny tiny boards and I mean little teeny tiny screws into circuit boards and you just kind of kind of eh, in there and then you can feel it the feedback in your hand when it tightens up. I mean, let's just say I haven't stripped a screw out with the thing yet and um yeah, it's a pleasure to use, even around the house. Um, I've had to put a few pieces of furniture together for the for the old, old lady there. And um, yeah, I, just just for that alone, I would have bought this thing because it just makes it, you know, all the little teeny tiny screws that you got to use and the Allen drives and all that jazz. This thing just kind of 
sails through it. it like I said, it's better than like a quarter inch driver, which you'd have to be real careful not to blow the screws out. Whereas to this thing, like I said, you got the nice feedback in your hand when it gets tight. It kicks back a little bit. And um, yeah, you, you got a good feeling when it's tight. And then when you get to the end, if you're kind of not sure if you got it tight enough, you could just manually give it a couple of give it a couple of twists but um yeah definitely recommend this thing i like it and uh if it broke tomorrow i'd buy another one so wrapping things up uh boots almost dropped them um brunt ryan uh brand boots uh i can honestly say for the price they're at least comparable to the other boots I've bought in that price range. Um, like I said, I got six months into them. I get a year out of a set of boots. I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, and I mean, like I said, they're for the price range. You could usually they usually have good sales on these things too. So check their social medias before you go in and just go ahead and buy them. I've seen like 30% off sales, but um, yeah, yeah, I can't I can't argue with them. Uh, the old Dewalt. Um, five inch uh, grinder here um yeah it's champ i like it it's got just as much power as my my old electric uh my old electric <laughs> my old ac powered one the plug-in bosch that i that i used and um yeah yeah can recommend this again milwaukee fuel uh right angle die grinder another winner i can't see how you'd go wrong if you're in the market for one of these and my little eight volt DeWalt screwdriver absolutely love this thing um yeah so that's it for for the tools from 2023 that i've used enough where i can give you an honest opinion on them i will link all the original videos for the tools the boots was a short whatever um so yeah but for the tools i'll link the original videos down inside the uh, description there and uh, if you want to like get a little bit more in-depth view of testing and whatnot um yeah check those out and um yeah so that's uh that's about it for 2023 as far as taking a look back and things that i got some got some um some miles on so um yeah i think that's about it for us uh thank you for watching questions comments concerns rub them down in the old uh comment section there i'll do my best to get back to you and uh yeah there you go